Uh, right now, uh, insurance bureaucrats decide what medical conditions will be covered for the patient. And they decide that looking at their bottom line, which is profit. Um, in a single payer plan, the patient with the doctor decide what medical care is needed, not a government bureaucrat. Um, here's my question. If single payer, if single payer is so bad, why didn't Congress allow it on the table to fail on its own? Uh, that's a good question, actually. I don't know. I mean, that's a pretty good question, actually. If single payer is so bad, why didn't Congress bring it up on its own? You've got to understand, advocates of single payer run Congress right now. Charlie Ringo, chairman of my committee, co-sponsor of a single payer bill. Pete Stark, chairman of the health subcommittee, co-sponsor of a single payer bill. John Conyers, Henry Waxman, Nancy Pelosi, all, and Harry Reid are all supporters of single payer legislation. It's a pretty darn good question as to why, if that's ultimately what they're in favor of, why don't we have a vote on that? That's a very good question, I think. Um, I think the reason is because they probably know it wouldn't pass. And so that's what's interesting about this debate. The rhetoric being used in this debate is rhetoric that lends one to believe that that is not the destination of this proposal. Choice, competition, if you like it, you want it, you can keep it. My opinion, however, is that what this bill is, is essentially an incremental step toward a single-payer system. That is the ultimate destination of this system. You disagree? That's my opinion, your opinion. We're going to agree to disagree. I fundamentally believe that is the destination of this bill. The reason I think that is the intention of this bill, ultimately, is because the bill's authors have told me that that is their intention of this bill. Um, uh, patient doctor, you're right about insurance companies. Insurers do discriminate and do ration care. A couple of points. Um, number one, at least you can change insurance companies. Number two, let's fix that and make sure that insurance companies don't do that. So I'd rather clean up our insurance laws and make sure that you have the right and the power to fire your insurer, fire your doctor, fire your hospital, go with your feet so they compete against each other for your business instead of having one provider, the government. And by the way, under a single payer system, it is not a situation where in every instance the patient and the doctor get to make the decision. The government has a stake in that decision that is made and under the bill itself, as it is being advocated in the context of the legislation, in the draft of the legislation, it will determine what care will be reimbursed and what care will not be under every circumstance. So it is not a situation where a doctor will get reimbursed if he prescribes something that the government won't pay him for. So you do have rationing in that sense in this bill, and it is not a case where you you have complete patient-centered health care under a single-payer system. That does not exist or occur. So let's clean up our insurance laws and make sure those work. And most importantly, if I could just get one point out, where is the power going to go? Is the power going to go to the government, or is the power going to go to the patient along with the doctor to make the decisions? That's, at the end of the day, in my opinion, the big difference here. else's 
going to die. It's a totally fair point. Look, um, can, can I yeah, can answer my second yeah. My second thing I'd like you to talk about is the 30% administrative overhead that we have in our health care system. And it's because the way the hospitals bill, the way the insurance companies bill, nothing matches. So one third of every dollar, 30 cents of every dollar in health care is spent on shuffling papers. Yeah. Okay, so. I mean, both very legitimate points. Very good points. Um, you're right about the whole bankruptcy thing. That is the biggest cause of personal bankruptcy. And that is why, look, I, I, I think that's got to get fixed. It's a big issue. Um, uh, how long can it wait? I'd rather get it right than get it wrong when you're dealing with 17 years old. Russian bills on the floor that we haven't even had a chance to read is, is, is just not, that's not the way legislation should occur. So, let's just get it right. Um, um, the, the, the cost of inefficiency, that's a really interesting point actually. There's a lot of issues that I think need to be addressed, which I propose addressing in, in legislation that I and others have offered. Um, software systems, look, you've got to make basically five systems Epic, McKesson, Cerner, Siemens, GE. Um, none of these systems talk to each other. It creates all this duplicated record keeping. You literally can't go from one hospital to another hospital system um, and have your records sent. You have to have new tests done, re-key the records in. There is an interoperability problem in the records keeping systems in our healthcare system, which is causing huge costs lots of overhead and, and dramatic, dramatically creating medical errors. You also have a prescription system that is not electronic. You know, no offense to doctors, but no one can read their handwriting. You know, they, and you know, look, my mom's a good example. She lives here in the, when it's warm and she goes down to Florida to, you know, when it's cold. Um, her doctor has no idea in Florida what's being prescribed to her up here at Mercy and vice versa. So you've got to have an electronic system that talks to each other, that breaks down what we call these stove pipes that's interoperable, that cleans up these records, and you've got to have a system, in my opinion, that cuts down on medical errors so the doctor, wherever you are, wherever you go, knows what you're doing, knows what your drugs are, knows what interactions are, so that you cut down on these errors. So there's lots of things. This is the bill I have with a Democrat, I mean, Dennis Moore in Kansas. I mean, a lot of these ideas are not bills that should be partisan. So there's a lot of these things that I think that can fix this thing. Also, to the first point, and I just want to re-emphasize this, I'm a big believer in robustly funding risk pools or reinsurance so that people don't go bankrupt when they get sick. I, I just, you know, and I don't have full support of my own party for that position, but I really do think we spend lots of money on health care, let's spend it more intelligently, and when a person does get sick through no fault of their own, had the substance kick in at that point, to prevent the premiums from going crazy, prevent them from going bankrupt. And if you do that, not only do you, do you help them, do you incentivize disease management, preventative medicine, which is the first title in the bill I proposed, and you actually clean up the actuarial pools for everybody else so that their insurance isn't so expensive as well. So I think there are good common sense answers that ought to be passed. I've introduced these concepts years ago. My party made a mistake in not acting on this years ago. That was a mistake. This is 17% of our economy. It affects literally every single person's life. And I just want to make sure we get this thing right.